Everyone is racing to have the first self-driving vehicle on the market because there is a lot of money to be made, like, like a stupid huge amount of money to be made. And while there are many other benefits, really it all comes down to the economics, or at least that's what I'm guessing here. And so I thought it'd be fun to have a look and just see who is actually leading this race and who is likely to be the first one to have a self-driving vehicle on the market. Let's go. So despite all of the awesome benefits that self-driving cars promise, like reclaiming our roads since we need less cars overall, reducing CO2 emissions since they're likely to be all electric, reducing accidents due to their better driving, avoiding parking tickets by moving when the meter maid comes to cite you. Okay, that last one was a joke, but you get the idea. There are countless ways that self-driving vehicles will benefit society and of course these companies that want to make huge profits. Hashtag capitalism. Wonder how big? Revenue for ride hailing services in the US could exceed $26 billion by 2023. And that's with only 18% of the people in the country using the service on a regular basis. And with an electric vehicle charged during off peak hours that is relatively maintenance free and doesn't require a driver, this means that these companies could reduce their costs per mile of up to 87%. So it makes sense when you see investors jumping at the chance to get a piece of these companies like Uber and Lyft as they prepare to go public, even while not posting a profit. But who's really gonna be the first in the United States? I say in the United States because Yandex already has a service like this available in parts of Eastern Europe and Russia with some pretty impressive results that we even saw demonstrated at CES 2019 in Las Vegas. But here in the US, we have several big companies pushing to be the first, namely Tesla, Waymo, and Cruise Automation. And a recent report, which includes data from the California DMV and a website called The Last License Holder, shows how these companies stack up in terms of miles driven per disengagement. This report shows that in California alone, these companies have racked up over 2 billion miles. However, you might wonder why Tesla isn't actually on this list. And I reached out to Tesla to ask about that, and I learned something interesting about this report. And basically, the California DMV records disengagements for self-driving vehicles as vehicles that have a level three or higher level of autonomy. So right now, Tesla's autopilot system is only classified as level two, meaning it is a driver assist program. You, as the driver, as we all know, still need to remain fully alert, hands on the wheel, kind of in control of anything that's going on. So you are actually meant to disengage autopilot. It's not like a fully autonomous system that is not designed for you to ever have to do that. So when you see reports like this out there, you need to have a bit of a, a caveat as to the context in which that data was collected, which is always important, I think, when looking at numbers. But what it comes down to is how many miles these systems have accumulated in a real world scenario, not a simulation, not a test track, but miles driven on public roads. So if we look at this data, Waymo of this list is clearly the leader. However, Tesla's autopilot does count here since basically what it's doing is training its algorithm. And on the ARK Invest podcast, Elon had some comments about this recently in terms of how they're gathering this data. The advantage that we have that I think is very difficult to overcome is that we have just a vast amount of data on interventions. So effectively, the customers are training the system on how to drive. And there are millions of corner cases. They're so obscure and weird, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, there's, there's different road markings, different rules in different countries, different expectations. You've got rain, snow, sleet, hail, you know, hurricanes, floods, fires, smoke, <laughs> dust. It's insane. I know. But we've got cars in almost all, really in all those environments. And so we, every time somebody intervenes, takes over from autopilot, it saves that information on and uploads it to our system. We, we don't know which car it was or how, what happened. You know, there's no individual attribution for the car. We just know that that intervention took place, and then we see what is required to fix that intervention. So the key thing here is when a person is driving an autopilot and something happens and they actually take control of the vehicle, they intervene with the system from doing its job. This is a clear indication to Tesla that there was something they could have improved. They save that data and then later upload it so they can improve the system over time. 
This is known as supervised learning, where a person is telling the algorithm what it should have done. And with Tesla's fleet of over 500,000 vehicles in all parts of the world, it's hard for anyone else to really have a shot at catching them in terms of how much data they're collecting. Elon also had a comment on this during that podcast. Maybe highlight for us, like a, I mean, Tesla has more real, real world miles than anyone else by far. I think we must have more than everyone else. Uh, maybe a hundred times more than times everyone more. else. Yeah, you combined. said five percent. I think on you. You said they have altogether five percent of. It's probably closer yeah. to one percent. So when we include Tesla's autopilot miles, which they publicly stated had reached over one billion in November 2018, and their current fleet size with an average of 10 miles driven per day, I'm trying to be conservative with that amount. I forecast that they're now adding 500,000 autopilot miles per day giving them a total of 1,046,000,000 autopilot miles driven. And if we do the same math for Waymo, we see that since they publicly reported 8 million miles driven back in July of 2018, and they also stated 25,000 miles per day, this puts them at just over 13 million miles total. And when you think about it, the Tesla fleet is now expanding rapidly in Asia and Europe, increasing even further those edge cases Elon mentioned, which also accelerates the growth of the total autopilot miles driven. So when it comes down to it, I really have a hard time imagining anyone catching Tesla in terms of how much data they're collecting in this semi-autonomous fashion with a fleet that is already substantially bigger than anyone else, about 100 times more data than anyone else, and a fleet that is doubling almost every single year. Maybe this is why Elon thinks that they'll be feature complete with the software this year, as well as he thinks regulators won't really put up too much of a fight and really kind of slow it down but he does tend to be pretty optimistic about his timelines in the past. But I think for a fully autonomous vehicle to exist where there isn't even a steering wheel and it can drive in any circumstance that it encounters, we're still 10 years out at least. But in between now and then, hopefully we can still achieve a lot of those benefits. We can reduce CO2 emissions. We can reduce the overall cars on the road. We can reduce the cost of operating these things. I think there are a tremendous amount of benefits that we can realize as we go from where we're at now, level two, to level three, and then level four. So I'm curious to hear what you think. Of course, no one knows what the future holds, but looking at this data is always fun. So I hope you'll join me on this journey if you haven't already. And lastly, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you back here in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you like data, want to learn more, maybe even make a career out of it, I have a free course to help you kickstart your data professional career. It's part of the FTD Academy, the Free the Data Academy, and it's free to you. You can go check it out, learn more, and sign up at ftdacademy.com.